In Habakkuk 2 verse 14, the prophet by the Holy Spirit gave prophecies that are very relevant to the times we live in today. The evils and darkness covering the earth makes it seem like there is no hope but actually there is hope. Where lies hope? Hope lies in the knowledge of the glory of God which is the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Things are bound to change when Jesus is revealed and known by many. Through the platform of Pluru, God's servant Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna reveals Jesus in his teachings. Be blessed as you listen to this series, Understanding the Finished Work of Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Praise God. We, we, we are going to be continuing from our teaching of last week. Last week we learned that Jesus came to give us the spirit of adoption. That's the twenty-second work he came to do. Jesus came to give us the spirit of adoption. We had a wonderful time last week. Amen to Jesus. And uh, we're going to be continuing this week. Amen to Jesus. Um, um, this teaching will have like three or four uh, parts. Amen. So we can just get a little understanding. We are just trying to get a little understanding. And um, from there we trust the Holy Spirit to keep teaching us more. Amen to Jesus. Yeah. Right, so in the previous lesson we learned that God adopted man back by redeeming us from the law. Amen to Jesus. Yeah. And we actually learned that God redeemed uh, where we're saved by the redemption from sin and um, that makes us a children of God and we are adopted by the redemption from the law that makes us what sons of God amen so there so we we, 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 we we come into the body of Christ into the into the into the beloved as children of God and then we go we mature into sons of God amen to Jesus Galatians 4 verse 5 and course scripture says to redeem them that were under the law that that we might receive the adoption of sons. To redeem them that we under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Praise God, for the Holy Spirit grant us revelation into your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, so the act of adoption from the law was a process. Amen. Amen. Now, what you need to understand is that God is a God of process. He's a God of process. And whenever we try to get away from process, we try to get away from God's operation. Are we together? And um, the, the love of God is what makes him give man process. Are we together? Yes. The love of God is what makes him allow man go, to go through process. The Bible says, if you go to Genesis chapter 1, we were never told the process. God said, God said, let them get rid of a break of his car. They brought to their car. Um, and God said, let us make my own image and likeness. And God made man this image. He was made a complete man, full grown, mature. He was, let's use the word, he was made a son. Are we together? Hallelujah to God. So he didn't understand what it means to go from a child to a son. So in Genesis chapter 1, the process uh, was not really explicit, it was not made clear to us. And we don't see a lot of process in Genesis chapter 1 in creation. Praise God for the Lord. Now, but the fall of Adam made, made the earth. Let me use the word def uh, maybe the earth realign to the process of uh, to the to the principle of process. Are we together? The fall of Adam made the earth realign to the principle of process, and it made God initiate the principle of process. Now, why this now? What we know that God is infinite in his knowledge, he knows the end from the beginning, his only side. So he, he does he, 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 he sets in place a program in anticipation of what we have. Because it knows what will happen, how we together. And so the process was always was in, was set in place, but it was not initiated at creation. The fall of Adam initiated the principle of process. It made God do it, activate that program called process. Process is God's program set in place to make man not destroy himself. Yeah. That is what I'm saying. Because in every man there is a self-destructive um, time bomb, which is called potentials abilities. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. When potentials and abilities do not go through process, they become self-destructive bombs that the individual can detonate and destroy himself. 
So God put process in place to prevent the self-destructive time bombs in man from destroying man. From man destroying himself with the self-destructive time bombs. I get what I'm saying. Now these time bombs are put there to be able to use to manifest the glory of God and you know show for the praise of God and everything that God did has an explosive ability right because God created in such a way that one person can be in one place and his impact can be felt all over I you not say that is what the atomic bomb is all about the explosive just send one and it, it drops in one location and its effect does what spreads that technology has been an inherent technology in man from the beginning. That was how God created. And as I said, the fruit will just multiply. The fruit will multiply. And replenish it from one location. Replenish it. It didn't say go from location to location to replenish it. That's why we saw that we God had it. It was trying to fight scriptures. Replenishing the earth was an inherent time bomb. Are you know what I'm saying? It was a bomb that God put in man for man to be able to explode and then the whole earth feels the impact of man and then he said um, 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 do, subdue the earth and have what? Dominion. Dominion and subdue. They are the inherent time bomb for man to be able to stay in one location and his impact is felt. And that's what technology is doing. That's why you can be in one location and by the media your impact is going far. Are you not saying? Yes. When the media was not so strong in the time of Kenny what was he using? He was using books. I remember when I read one of his books and he said he was praying. He, he, that man prayed and prayed and prayed and he would pray and the Lord begin to tell him this. He would write and he was, there was one he said he was right. He, he was in, in church, he don't pray. And then the Lord told him to start praying in particular cycle. <laughs> that cycle. <laughs> that cycle. And then the Lord told him stop. Now go to that cycle. <laughs> go to that cycle. And then after he did that, the Lord didn't look at Psalm 19. And he was writing what the Lord was telling him. And then later, the Lord told him, start putting your messages in cassettes and books. When he was doing that in that time, people did not see the power of books and cassettes. Because prior, before him, 1942, E.W.K.O., they wrote, uh, uh, what, uh, what's the name of our uh, E.W.K.O., as for well, what Jess means, this guy, they wrote books. You know, it was, so it was like the impact of their books were not felt. You know what I'm saying? The people were not really reading their books like that. Are you getting me? But God told Kenny to write books. And then that was not the end. He told him, let the books go out. So what did they do? They said they're sending books to Africa. Africa. My parents were beneficiaries of the books. And tapes. They were sending to Africa. I wish I was maybe 20 then when they were sending books. You know what I've been begging them for books? And tips, and I've been really done to be giving books and tips. The books of credit I have, I just feel I can get myself. I'm one of the ones I took from my parents. Amen. Now, so when he began to do that, what happened? Kenneth Hagin never left America. He never, he never traveled out of America. But his impact in Africa is stronger than many people that have been through What are the secrets? The books he sent. That explosive atomic bomb in him that God told him, This is how you release it. I get what I'm saying. And he didn't just start writing suddenly in the, in, in the initial phase of this, you know. He had to go through a process before the Lord told him, Start writing. And you get what I'm saying. Now, if the Lord did not take him through the process and he started writing, that atomic bomb might have even destroyed his ministry. And you get what I'm saying. Yes. And so we must understand this. Praise God. That God is a God who operates in process because his process is his love for us. To prevent us from using what he has given us to dominate and subdue to end up destroying ourselves with it. So that's why we enjoy, we, we thank God for process. When he makes us go through process, we thank God for it. Are you going to say? Amen. Alright, now so the, 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 the act of redemption from the law was a process which entailed two, two stages. Number one, the first stage was liberation from sin. And this actually creates the new birth and the new creation. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then the second stage is redemption from the law. Liberation from sin, which creates the new birth and the new creation, and the redemption from the law. Why are we doing all these teachings like this? You see, um, I believe that the church really needs to go back to the basics. Seriously. There are many things we really don't, we don't, we don't take note of and it's not helping us. Are you getting what I'm saying? We need to go back to the basics. This is a time where the ones we did must be mature for the harvest that is coming in. This is not the time where 
time you expect pastor to do full up again. And uh, there is one uh, leaders, you need to work for them. You no, know, this is the time where discipleship will be done by everybody. Everybody will be involved in discipleship. We will have people who discipleship. The person that is in your neighbor, that just your neighbor that just got born again, you take it as a responsibility to follow him up. Even before the church says you are following him up, you are following him up, you are discipling him, you are teaching him the word of God. You, at least you can give him milk well. You can give him meat well. When he now comes to pull the head, you can answer say, uh, come to come to pastor, let pastor teach you more. But at least as a as a believer, as, as a follower of God, you should be able to give milk, you should be able to give what? Free meat. Answer questions that will come in that light. And then you can now refer them to pastor. Amen to you. That's how we need all this. Right. So liberation from sin and then redemption from the Lord. Now what does liberation from sin entail? We're watching this fast. This entails God the Father freeing us from sin as a nature and his penalty which is death. Praise God forevermore. So liberation from sin is God the Father freeing us from sin as a nature. And we learned last week that um, Adam, when he he, he he did what? When he sold his birthright, he committed treason. What did he do? He willingly gave himself out for adoption to the devil. So he took on a new nature. It was the nature of the devil. And I see, let me tell you something. God is nature conscious. Everything in life operates on nature. But it says, let every help yielding seed bring of its kind, of its nature. And let us make man in our own image after our likeness. So without remove nature from creation, creation is nonsense. I get what I'm saying. It is that serious that even from decaying bodies, you can still get the end. Is that also? <laughs> even less of bones, you can get the end. That means nature does not die. Nature does not die. So when God saw that Adam had given himself up to adoption to the devil, he had changed nature and said, This is a serious matter. This is a do or die matter. Nature must not change. Adam, your nature must not change. And so God went on out. This is a nature issue. Very much we press it. You see, when let's go. It's a nature issue. It's a nature issue. And we most of the reason we don't understand how serious this nature issue is. We don't understand how serious. Why is it that people go for DNA test? Because they know it's a serious what? Issue. God the Father freed man from the nature of sin and his penalty. By sending his son Jesus to die for us. John 3 16, popular scripture. For God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son. That's why we let him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now we must understand something. Why did God send Jesus? Verse 7 says, God did not send his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Why? No, don't condemn the world because my nature is still at stake. Are you know what I'm saying? It was his nature that was saying, Jesus, don't, don't, don't. See, even if you get angry with you. So even if you get angry, don't condemn them. Don't condemn them. That was why when Moses came to meet him and Elijah, we learned one of our things that the reason why Moses came to meet him there was going, my, my Lord Jesus, don't, these people, don't, don't, don't fall for their, for their pressure. They are very terrible. If you know what they did to me, because of them, I only saw promised land at the end time. Jesus, you must enter this your promised land. So don't listen to them. They, they know how to kill their own. They know how to treasure their own. They are very, they, they, are, they are rebellious people. Please, be quiet. It was, oh, oh, oh. When I, when, I, when I started getting angry, that was when the problem started. Jesus, don't be angry. John, you guys, when Moses finished advising, he said, like a sheep to be slaughtered. <laughs> he opened up God's mouth. He said, why is this man quiet? He said, no, as I receive advice. <laughs> Prophetic counsel has come my way. I will not put my mouth back because I know you people. Right? See, I know you. Not, not that I know you people, I know you people before. The Ghost has revealed to me. But Moses had to come for top two emphasis. I get what I'm saying? So, because it was a nature issue, and the father was like, at all costs, Holy Spirit, I know you have spoken to Jesus, I know you have told him, Moses, please go. Go and please reconfirm this in Jesus, don't open your mouth. Why? Because I didn't say it to condemn one. If this word is mistakenly condemned, my nature in humanity is lost. Now, not only my nature in humanity, let's understand something that Adam was a focal point of creation. When the Bible says, he said to you, to reconcile all. Things. Now, so the fall of Adam was the disassociation of all things from God. 
So both Adam and creation were disassociated from God. Now this is an it, it, see, they say when you want to get um, there when we used to, when I was working in the organization I was working, they tell us when you go to an organization to sell as a marketer, as a salesman, they said, try your best to look for the CEO or the manager. He said, because if you can get the manager, you are going to the other staff. That was the same game that Adam played. Adam did not want to look for lion to deceive. He didn't look for, for bear to deceive. He didn't look for grasses to deceive. Not tree, not fishes, no. He went for the crown of creation, the CEO of creation. He went to the crown. And he knew that if I get the CEO, I have gotten the whole of creation. And so when he got the crown of creation, the whole of creation was lost. So the nature of God that was revealed in creation got lost by Adam selling unto the devil. And so the fight of God, so we don't see that God came to save man and that was all. No, the fight of God was not just man, but it was creation. The Bible says the earth was without form and void. It is believed that there was a pre-earth form where the fallen angels came and they destroyed the earth and they made it without form and void. And God had to recreate again. The devil wanted to take the earth back to that state that it was before God created. So the earth, the earth has always been the target of the devil. It has always been his target. And he did it before by falling angels. But this time around, he knew that the angels have already been dealt with. Now, the only way to do it is to do one is to target the sea of creation. And then when he did that, he knew that by getting Adam, creation had been God. The Bible says, that's what the Bible says, he came, it was Jesus reconciled all things. And then, if you look at uh, Joshua 2, verse 8, it says, I will pour my free spirit upon all flesh. When you take the word flesh in the Hebrew, it means flesh, everything that has flesh. I get what I'm saying? So, both, both animals and what? Human beings with the spirit before them. And fishes, they have flesh. Animals have flesh. So, the spirit is poured on everything that has flesh. Why? Because we are dealing with the nature of God here. The nature of God is revealed in creation. Now let's look at another thing. Let everything that had breath. Praise the Lord. Now we're talking about breath. We're talking about plants and animals. All living things, they have breath. Animal plants exhale oxygen, is that also? And inhale carbon dioxide, is that also? Why we we inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide? So it's the exchange of our our um, our, our gases that makes for the uh, coexistence of both plant and animal. And said so everything that has breath, then breath. That means both plants and animals are to praise the Lord. Why? Because it is a proof that both plants and animals, every living thing, is what is the reflection of the nature of. God. God's nature is revealed in every of these things. The Bible says, Jesus told them, He said, If you don't allow the children to praise, what would I do? I raise up stones. Now, we said, Let everything that has been. So, that, then we remove inanimate objects. Is that also? We remove stones, we remove rocks. Are we getting what I'm saying? But now, Jesus said, He said, If you don't, if you don't let them pray, I raise up stones to pray. So, in other words, it gets to an operation where even inanimate objects begin to praise. Are you getting what I'm saying? The earth has ears. The earth cross has ears. What um, our mountains have ears? Are you getting what I'm saying? That's like I said, if you say to this mountain, be that removed. They have ears. That shows that what? They are still what? The carriers of the nature of God. So when the devil made Adam lose it, he made he was targeting creation. The devil has always been against creation. Why? Because he was not happy that he was created the way he was created. I don't know to that. I've talked about studying that before. I hear what I'm saying. So the nature of God has a question here. And God was out for his nature. The nature, he saw the nature living. He saw himself losing his nature in creation. His nature is in himself. His nature is in heaven. He's in the angel. The children are in I understand what I'm saying. But there is a nature he brought into creation that is so important to him. Are you know what I'm saying? Now, so when Adam sinned, God saw that nature going. He saw him losing that nature. And he said, Jesus, 
don't connect, not for any reason should you condemn. Why? Because if you make the reason to condemn, then we push you to condemn. Once you open your mouth to condemn, I have not, we have lost the nature. I have lost the nature. I cannot use it. That's why Jesus had to be like a sheep to the slaughter. Why? Because I cannot lose this nature. <laughs> That's the heart of sacrifice. Thank you, Amen. Yeah, um, 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 Romans 5, verse 8 says, verse, King James says, but, but God commended his love towards us, in that man we yet seen as Christ died for us. The reason we say, but Christ died on behalf of us. See, King James does not make it sweet enough. It is for Christ died on behalf of us. Why do we still sinful? In that way, God has showed us how much he loves us. How much does God love us? It's not by the cars we have. It's not by the houses we drive. It's not by the marriage we have. It's not by the children we have. It's not by even at this world, any good thing that we have. It's not even by the life we have. The show that God loves us is that Christ died on our behalf. That's all. That's why God is not trying to prove any point in him. He has finished proving the point that he loves us. Are we together? This means that Jesus did not just die for us. He died in our place as our substitute. Thus, he died our supposed death. See, we don't know the gravity of this thing. Are you hear what I'm saying? We are most meant to die. And Jesus came and said, <laughs> You go and die for me. The Bible says, Greater love by no man than a man laid down his life for his friend. He said, even a good man will not do that. I'm paraphrasing. Even a good man will not do that. So how can we explain this magnitude of love? The proof of God's love for us is that he died our death. That's all we need to do. Not anything at all. Not, see, we, we, oh, we, we, most of the times we, we, we have misunderstood the love of God. And the more we misunderstand the love of God, the more the devil gets excited. Why? Because we don't actually know the definition of the love of God. The definition of the love of God is that Christ died our death. So that we will not die that death again. Yeah. So he died our supposed death so we can live his life here on earth and eternity. He died our death so we can live his life on earth and in eternity. By so doing, he died the death made for our sins. Look, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Romans 4, verse 25 says, Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised for our justification? It was for us. He, he, he took our place in death. He took our place in death. He took our place in death so that we might be what? Justified. So his death was for our offenses and his resurrection was for our justification. Yes. Now so, because he resurrected, we are justified. We are not justified by what we do or what we don't do. We are justified because of his resurrection. That's why we are justified. So let me say this way, if Christ died eh, and he did resurrect, our sins would have what? Died, but would have not been justified. Yeah. What does that mean? The proof of his death is his resurrection. The proof of the death to our sin is his resurrection. When you go to do a transaction, you pay money, you ask for what? A proof of transaction. Is that not so? A receipt. And that receipt is what you want to show to the person who sent you that this is the proof that I have what? Paid money. To the bank, it is a teller. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is the evidence. When Christ died, that was sin that was killed. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Now, but Christ had to go to the court of heaven to show proof that sin has been killed. If not, the devil can come and lie. He's a liar. Yes. What do people do in court? I remember I saw somebody who said he walks in the court. He said, it's so painful that the truth is not... It's not what at the is what the friend of is not what really sets you free in the court. Because even though there is a truth, 
Without the evidence for the truth, the truth cannot see set you free. Yeah. yeah. And so when Jesus died and he went to hell and he took the gates of the, the keys of death and hell, what happened? The devil quickly went towards to the meeting of the sons of God. That was in Job chapter. I said, when the sons of God were gathered, the devil was there. Now, he, 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 there are people that are on the way to the sons of God now, amen to Jesus. But the devil is pre created from his uh, form before he became Lucifer. Before he, sorry, before he became a fallen angel. When he was seen Lucifer, the day star um, died, he was in the category of the son of God. Are we together? Yes. We have sons of God. Uh, I will not go into that now. Now, so, he was in that category. When he fell, he fell from that category. But as a stubborn headed that he is, he still comes for the meeting once in a while. <laughs> Even though he got his son, he will still come as a stubborn headed guy. And when he comes, he will say, I'm coming on the grounds of um, legal jurisdiction. What does that mean by legal jurisdiction? And because I remember my job is I am the accuser of the baby. And remember the defense and the, you have the defender and the plaintiff. The plaintiff is the one who reports the matter. The defendant is the one who the thing is against. So the defendant has a right. Even if it is if he's he killed the person who he, he still has a right to a lawyer. Say so Lord, I still have the right to come and plead my case. <laughs> Even though I am no more a son. You cannot just declare me guilty like that. And then, then we have to start dealing with what? Evidences. So when Jesus died, when he went to the, I don't know, go through the long story, the mini story, the last case, and every of that, when he tells that, whoops, this is sin, Lord. Jesus has killed, he has killed death. He has killed sin. Sin has finished. The devil doesn't give up. So what did he do? He quickly ran to the court, the, the court of heaven. To start ranting and shouting. Hey, Jesus has not done anything, you know. My father, see, see, Elohim, Elohim, see, Jesus is not finished that work. He's a liar. He's a liar. His brother is a liar. He's the father of lies. The inventor of lies. The inventor of lies. Amen. The creator of lies. He created lies. And he began to talk, but Jesus did not stress himself. Now, when Jesus resurrected, are we together? It was a physical proof to show that we have been justified, that he has destroyed it. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was in what the devil did was that immediately he saw Jesus come to him, he ran straight to the throne, to the to the court of heaven. He ran straight to the court of heaven and started talking. But now the reason why I was doing that was it was also, you see, these are when you see some of them who play some games, they are not the devil's game. It was a game to be used to make sure that Jesus will not resurrect. Are you getting what I'm saying? To make sure that Jesus went from hell, rode to heaven, to defend to the to the to the court of heaven, and start trying to defend himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Now, but Jesus knew better and was wiser. So what did he do? He knew that his physical resurrection was important for the physical show of his justification of our justification. And it was meant for a timing. So what did he do? He still resurrected. While the devil was wasting his time talking there, he resurrected. And when he resurrected, the number of the Bible says when he came to meet him and he said, Do not touch me, for I have not ascended to what? To the Father. Who is going to ascend to the Father? Now, the priest, when the priest is, is, is to go and carry out his priestly duties, he, he doesn't, he, he's not meant to be touched by anybody. Anybody who touches him makes him a defiled being. He doesn't touch anybody, he doesn't allow anybody to touch him so that he will not be defiled. He has to go like that in that sanctimonious holy manner into the holies of God, carry out his duties. Then he cannot come out and then touch people. Now Jesus knew that he had to go before the holies of holies, which is the court of heaven, to carry out his duty of what? Of the great high priest. After that, before people can touch him, after, all, after that, he could not eat with the disciples. He could allow him, uh, Thomas touch his hand, uh, his hand, praise God for all. Now so when he went to the court of heaven, what did he go to do? He went to show the proof of our justification. What was the proof? His blood. And his what? And his strife. The blood was the proof that our sins have been taken care of. Our sins have been removed. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. And his appearance was the proof of our what? Justification. So if Jesus did not appear, number one, there would have been no evidence to show that sin had been killed. 
the devil can wait, wait. Um, you, uh, um, 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 a plaintiff brings a case to court. And the defendant refused to come to court. What does the judge do? The judge gives him a number of time to come. If he doesn't come, the, the judge tells the plaintiff, evidences, evidences, you did not write, he passes judgment. Why? Because the plaintiff, the defendant's refusal to come is a sure proof that what he knows that he's what? Guilty. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, so, in this time around, Jesus, then the devil went and he started ranting there. But Jesus took his time to make sure that he, he resurrects physically. Because the physical resurrection was important to send a message of encouragement to his people. Are you getting what I'm saying? His disciples. Then, after that physical resurrection, he went and ascended to, be, to, the, to, to, to the court of heaven and presented these evidences. Evidence to show, and you that in court without evidence, the case is dead. Evidence to show that what sin had been dealt with, which was the blood. Then, evidence to show that we have been justified, his person. If he didn't resurrect, there's no show of our justification. There's no evidence of our justification. In fact, even the work of what the of, of the, the removal of sin would have even hold with hold no water. Our justification was very important for even our redemption and forgiveness of sin to be effected. So Jesus had to go before the Father and show him the blood, proof that I have removed their sins, and himself proved that they have been what? Justified. That is God's proof of love to us. And with that we need his life. Both now and in eternity. Romans 6, verse 22 says, For the wages of sin is dead, for the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So when Jesus died of our death, he gave us a gift. You see, that's why we cannot explain the love of God. They say it's, the song says it's so wide that we cannot get around it, it's so deep that we cannot get inside of it. Because how can you explain, took away our sins? Died on our death and then still gave us a gift. Just dying on our death is enough. To take away our sin is enough. Justifying us is more than enough. Even if after justifying us, okay, all of you now you have to die and go to heaven, we'll be most grateful. But he went for that Lord to give us his life. That life that he lived on earth for 33 and a half years, and there was no trace, there was no situation of sickness, there was no there was no lack, there was no want. There was no threat, and you get what I'm saying. Huh? They never heard that headsmen or, 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 or bandits kidnapped him. And you get what I'm saying. Huh? They never heard that arm robbers killed him. No, 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 the shot at him killed him. They never heard that he, 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 he was lacking or he was walking, or he was in what? He was in debt, he was poor, he was begging. You know? They never heard he was self sufficient and all sufficient. That life is called eternal life. That's the life that was given to him. He never heard that a sickness attacked his body and ravished his whole system and killed him. No, he never heard that. It was never recorded. Rather, when he came, sicknesses ran away. When he appeared, diseases ran away. When he appeared, death ran away. That same life, it's called Zoe, Zao life. That same life was the life he gave to us so we can live like him. That one of the one was it. As he is in heaven, so are we here on earth. That same life is a life he gave us, eternal life. So we can maximize God here on earth. We can, we can reveal Yahweh here on earth. And we do that and triumphantly enter into eternity. We are not meant to chicken out of life. No, we are meant to triumphantly reveal Yahweh in life and then triumphantly enter into eternity. Jesus is not chicken out of life. That was why my friend and uh, uh, when, when Pilate was telling me, he said, don't you know that I can, I can, I can, I can give you life? Hey! He said to the camera, but inside he was saying, hey, shut up. I am the one, I have the power to lay down my life and to pick it up. Why? I don't chicken out of life. I triumph in life. You can't kill me. I'm the one laying it down. You are not taking it. I'm giving it. When I give it back, I will come and collect it. Yes. That's why you cannot take the life of a child of God. That's why we 
don't chicken out of life. When the devil presses the more, we get harder. Why? Because we are the ones who give and take our lives. You can't take it from us. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God for Hallelujah. Eternal life is God's gift, is God's life. Sorry, eternal life is God's life, given to us to make us new creations. Eternal life is God's life given to us to make us new creations. Now, yeah, yeah, let me understand this. <laughs> uh, now, when God created Adam, Adam was made in the image and likeness of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, Adam was in the class of God, and every of that you can see. Now, when Adam fell, Adam became a dead creation. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's when we're talking about the old man here, yeah, we're talking about the dead man. Yeah, the dead man. He became a dead creation. Now, when God wanted to bring man back to himself, what did he do? He gave his life back to man. Now, it, it still boils down to the nature matter and the life matter. Genesis chapter uh, 2 says that God created man from a dust and breathed into him the breath of life, the neshama, and he became what? A living soul. A living soul. It was that breath that gave man, that charged man to life, and man became what? A living soul. Now, that same breath was what made him God's creature. Are you getting what I'm saying? God's creature. I made him a son of God, made him a child of God. He made him, let me say what? He made him the first of God's kind on earth. Yeah. The first of God's kind on earth with immortality. He was, I won't call him a new creature, I'll call him the first of, yes, new is still first, are you getting what I'm saying? The first of God's kind, he was a new creation. This, this kind had not been seen before, are you getting what I'm saying? That's why when, when God made man, God was like, wow, wow. And the whole of heaven was like, wow, Ooh, this is wow. We have not seen this kind before. God was wowing at Adam. Creation was wowing at Adam. Lucifer was jealous of Adam, but Adam did not know what he was. Mm. <laughs> One of the greatest things, but a man in honor and woman in honor is like a beast that perishes. The worst thing that can happen to somebody is for people to be celebrating you and you don't know who you are. Mm. That's what happened to Adam. God was wowing at Adam. Heaven was wowing at Adam. The two people and Sarah came to meet and said, What did you say this, this creature was called? He said, It doesn't have wings. So. It doesn't have wings. It doesn't have wings. And he said, It's looking so. Where is this? This, 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 this being is looking so different. He said, What did you say? He's, 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 he's called my son. I would also say, Yes, my, you are my son. But this one, after me, is he. Hey! So you say, But well, no, we have been here with you from the beginning. They say, No problem. Man. We have been here with you for long. Say, Yeah, but this one is. Man, this is my brain child. Children you say, wow, this one is very different from us. This one is unique. They were not trying to describe Adam. Look at his head. Look at his hands. They were described. They had never seen this before. And when Lucifer looked, Lucifer was like, ah, this one is really what I was trying to be. The image and the likeness. I want to be as enemy. And then he came to give it to Adam. So he was jealous. So when Adam fell, Adam became what? An old creation. And it was bread that made Adam a living being. Are you know what I'm saying? It was bread that brought him into a living being. The breath of life. And the God breathed into the breath of life and he became a living soul. Now, when God wanted to bring about the new creation, he released his life again. Life must be released into. When he released his life, now this is what happened. The, the old creature died, are you getting what I'm saying? And then the new creature came alive. So when God looked at man, he saw Adam again. He saw that lost nature once again. Praise God forevermore. But now, this 
is in a beautiful manner. He saw that gospel preacher, but this was in a different manner. Now, in, in Genesis, God breathed into Adam. What breath there? Neshama. It means a vital breath. It means um, uh, spirit, inspiration, divine inspiration. It was actually the spirit that breathed into Adam. Are you going to say? And it became so. Now in, in Genesis it was his bread that made it to him and it became so. But now in the new creation, this is what God did. God now substituted. He substituted. He the Bible said uh, for, for uh, he you know say was missing that we made the righteousness of God in him. God substituted. God did not just preach. God substituted. He took he took the righteousness of Christ. He, you see, God did, you see, when you have lost before. When you are trying to do the same thing, what do you do? You take extra measures. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, Adam was created in the glory of Yahweh. Are you getting what I'm saying? In the glory of God. He was a full man in the glory of God. But now, the new creation, this is what happened. The Yahweh did not just create the new creation in his creation. Now, the Yahweh gave the new creation his righteousness. Why? We see, the antidote to sin nature is the righteousness nature. So this time around, God had to make us conscious of what? Of the nature of righteousness in us. So that we know that this nature, with this nature, it is impossible to sin. He that is born of God cannot make practice of sin. With this nature, it is impossible to carry the old nature again. What God did in the new creation was that he made sure that he closed every holes and lapses to prevent the devil from entering into the new creation. So what did he do? He looked for an access into the into Adam, which was a wife, and finally entered. In the new creation, God closed every as every seemingly access. He closed it. And what did he close it with? Righteousness. So righteousness is Malambu Kasha. Is God closing every, every, every hopes, every every probable or visible access of the devil. us new creatures. And this life is the life of Christ. His very nature, his very righteousness, his very life. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says in him dwells uh, 2 verse 9 says in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, in, in creation of Adam, God breathed into Adam. He released the spirit into Adam and he became a living soul. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. It was the personality of the spirit that was released into Adam. And look at the way God was warming at him. But now in the new creation, you know what happened? God did not, in, in, in Adam, God released his spirit on him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But in the new creation, you know what happened? God released his full self. He, he, the whole Godhead entered. Right? Because the Bible says, in Christ dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And when we are, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. What is that passage? You know that when we get, when we become new creation, what happens? Christ in us is the hope of glory. And Christ in Christ will the fullness of the Godhead. So in the new creation, the Godhead encapsulated in the person of Christ enters into this person. <laughs> Wrong closed. No more access. And you know, why? Uh, this is not part of my teaching. Why could the devil also have a little access? Now, when Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, uh, 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 um, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and so on. That means upon the face of the earth, and the spirit of the Lord will hover upon the face of the earth. Now, the spirit that will hover first, the spirit will hover means he just stayed in one place, like a drone, and was taking the necessary call, um, uh, um, pictures and information and reported to the Father. Now, at that point, the Holy Spirit was there at creation as a survey of creation, and then he went to take information back to the Father. It was not his dispensation, and you get what I'm saying. Now, when God created Adam, God released his breath, the Holy Spirit, into, into Adam, and Adam became a living soul. But still, it was not the dispensation of the Spirit, and you get what I'm saying. It was still the dispensation of the Father, and you get what I'm saying. And so, because of God is the dispensation of the Spirit, Adam did not understand how to communicate fully with the Spirit. And you get what I'm saying? And then you understand that God gave you what we are, was supposed to come in our time. God, that is what God fast forwarded Adam in creating him. Are you getting me? 
God gave Adam what was meant to come in and attack in our distance. It's so, it's so annoying when you see that Christians don't understand the place of the Holy Spirit. You see that people call him a force, and you see that Christians don't want to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's annoying. Why? Because God even gave Madonna Masha. When we don't have an understanding of the Holy Spirit, when we don't relate to the Holy Spirit, when we don't have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, it shows that we are behaving like Adam. I will let that last thing to about the Adamic nature. Adam received what was ahead of his time. We are the ones who receive the Holy Spirit in this dispensation. Now, chapter 2, and you get what I'm saying? Yes. You are prophesied about it. The Holy Spirit was poured out in, 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 in John 1 like when Jesus said it is finished when he gave up the ghost. When he gave up the ghost, that was when the Holy Spirit was given up to humanity. Now, that was when the Holy Spirit was given up to humanity. But, and that was when his dispensation actually started. Now, his indwelling manifestation came in Acts chapter 2. Now, that was when the dispensation of the Holy Ghost started when Jesus gave up the ghost. That was when he was meant to start operating as Lord and in charge. Not in the time of Adam, but in the time of Adam, God gave Adam a privilege that even he did not understand. He gave him the Holy Spirit, but Adam did not know what he understood. What he had. So, because Adam and the Holy Spirit was meant to be a check. He clearly witness to the spirit and the children of God. He reproves the word of sin and unrighteousness. He reminds us of who we are. He's meant, it was meant to be a check on Adam. He was meant to be the one leading Adam. So with him continuously leading Adam, it's impossible for Adam for the devil to 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 to, to trim off his feet. So you know what I'm saying? But Adam did not understand who the Holy Spirit was in him. Now that's why the Bible said the cool of the evening, the Father will come to complain with them. Because it was still, it, it, the Father still had to keep doing that because Adam did not understand. The Holy Spirit was a dormant energy in Adam. Why? It was not his dispensation. So since it was not his dispensation, Adam still did not understand who he had on the inside of him. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. But now, when in the new creation, this is what the Father did. The father encapsulated his fruits. He said, I see, I gave Adam the Holy Spirit. Yet, see, God is God thinks so. You think he doesn't think? You think he doesn't think? You think he doesn't strategize? It didn't more than that, he doesn't think that he's only one thinking. I gave Adam the Holy Spirit. My my I, I actually depend on the Holy Spirit. I depend I, 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 me, I need my spirit. I give him my spirit. And Adam still fail. I suppose we say it's because of Eve. Okay, this must be the mathematics that worked out. Adam did not understand the operation of the spirit. Yes, I know he didn't understand. I just came to see him understand. Number two, it was not the dispensation of the spirit. Oh, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. The antidote to the temptation of the devil now is what would I do? I will encapsulate myself, my spirit, in my soul. And I will put the and I as my three personalities and that is I, I will enter into this new creation. Mm. Once I enter in like that, my lack of party then cannot come close. Yes. <laughs> That's why we don't know what we have. We play like Adam. If Adam knew he had this we then would have not come close. We we have the God dead. Yet the devil is making a mystery of us. Because we don't know what we are. A man being in honor and understanding honor is like a beast that perishes. That's what the church of Jesus is still lacking. That's why we don't know how to flourish. That's why we keep jumping up and looking for prophet, apostle, looking for this. Because you don't know. You don't know. You don't know that Yahweh gave an antidote to the devil when he became a new creation. He came into you. So nothing can come into you that is not of him. Let me run away from here, please. Amen to Jesus. So we have the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God, God's life is God's. God, I thought that is God's life. Give it to us because new creation. As a new creation, we are what? The righteousness of God in Christ. And I made us understand that righteousness is what? Is what give to God give to us to lock up all the holes from which the devil may have access into our lives. 
That's why the revelation of righteousness is very important to the child of God. Because even when we don't have revelation of righteousness, I, I was watching the cartoon of Martin Luther King yeah, last night. Um, I was watching it and, and I saw how Martin Luther King, uh, King was uh, uh, confessing his sin and confessing his sin. And his priest came and said, What are you doing again? He said, I'm confessing my sins. And I said, Why? I thought you just confessed it. He said, Yes, I confessed. And the priest said, Okay, the more you confess, the more you feel that you are not confessed. He says, And the priest was like, She was trying to help him understand. And I left there. What was the issue? He said, he, 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 he said the more I confess, the more there's pride coming up in me. <laughs> it is the same consciousness, and that's what the devil wants. Righteousness and the righteousness consciousness barricades us from every penetration of sin consciousness. Yeah. Mm. Once the devil can make us conscious of ourselves, or of our weaknesses, he can defeat us in any aspect. Once it makes you conscious of yourself and your body starts telling you, see, this your this the way your leg is paining you, that thing is arthritis, you know you are aging. Once it makes you conscious of that pain in the leg, what happens? He activated you. But once you are conscious of your righteousness and pride, that is, you are, you live his life, eternal life, and they have, and they walked in the wilderness for 40 years, and they have, they were knees were not feeble. Ah, because I have the eternal life of Christ in me, my knees cannot be feeble. You know what happens? That revelation, that righteousness mentality, it it it, it, it closes the access to every mentality of what sin that comes with sickness, diseases, and every of that, and hellfire at the end. Praise God for the Lord. So you know, that's why the Lord says, "Therefore, if there any man be in Christ, he is a new, he is a new creature. All things are passing away. Behold, every all things have become new." And the word "new creature" there actually means a novel creature, it, and it means a creature that has not been seen before. Are you know what I'm saying? Now, when God created Adam, heaven was wowing. The earth was wooing. Woo, wow. Everybody was wow, 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 wow. The devil was jealous. I did not say. I know what the man created as his own image with his nature and to his spirit. I did not say. But now, for the new creature, it is the fullness of Godhead that is in us. Now, so, what Adam was, eh? That made heaven wow and made the dead one great. We are a different kind of what Adam was. <laughs> so we are not actually created as Adam. We are a new kind of Adam. Yes. One that has never been seen. What new creature that means you means something that has never been seen before. One that has never been seen. So that's it. Being an aberration is that being just a reduction or, or, a, or, or, a, tantam, or a waste, let me use the word, a waste of precious time to just walk, kill G, for Jesus to be killed just to make us Adam. No, no, that would be a waste of time. It would be an aberration, like a waste of effort and investment. So that would have not been what God wanted to be. Wanted. So when God allowed Jesus to be killed, what did he do? He created a creature that has never been seen from other times. That is why the devil became. Let them remain. They can remain in church, but let them just be. Let them not know who they are. 
Because if we they know who they are, I'm in trouble. I've run out of time, I'm run out of business. <laughs> but I tell you, no matter how much the devil fights, these truths must hit the hearts of God's children. We will know who we are. We will, we will come to the reality of identity. And the devil will be out of business. So Revelation 5 21 says, For you are made to be seen for us, who do you not see? That we might believe the righteousness of God in him. The eternal life of God makes us the righteousness of God. Amen. This new nature and status once again makes us children of God and the heads of God, which are lost in Eden. You see, this new nature and status makes us children of God and heads of God. Romans 8 verse 7 says, I make children, then heads. Heads of God and joint heads with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. So this new nature makes us children of God and heads of God. You know, when you give it to a child, you know the feeling. You know the feeling. You just see your nature. You just see yourself. You see yourself. You see your nature in your hand. Are you going to say? Yes. Now, that, that's, the, you see, that's the reason why, no matter how children is being with, you just still talk towards them. You just still love them. Why? Because you just see your nature. Some of the time, you just see you just see you reproducing yourself. <laughs> you just see you, you just see you doing yourself. Like our pastor always tells me that my daughter is my senior because she's she's the advanced talking version of me. Advanced. There's additional reason called advanced. There's additional data. <laughs> she's the advanced talking version of me. And sometimes I begin to beg her. I begin to beg her because I know. I committed the talking, uh, the talking offense, but now somebody has seen all we need. And it just makes you excited. The new nature has come. But it comes as a child. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So now, when this new nature came out, it didn't come as a full blown man like Adam. It came as a child. That is the reason why the devil got mad again. See, so now you have learned the technology. In fact, say, you, have, you have used a new technology. Now you don't fight a child. You love a child. The devil now went to man and started fighting the child in the person of Jesus. That's why like, even now you see that even the devil starts fighting the children from the womb. Yeah, because he doesn't know the future. But say, but eventually this is going to be a new country. Let me start fighting. Uh, so we come as children of God, amen to Jesus, and we come as heirs of God. That is, we are we are we are heirs, we have a right to the inheritance in God. Praise God for more. Now new birth makes us children of God by redemption from sin. Makes us children of God by what? Redemption from sin. But it's not enough to remain as children of God because this is primes us of enjoying our rights and privileges in Christ. And that's what is played in the church today. We have too many children. I will even say 90% children. They are all looking for the man of God. Thank God I did a, a post on the man of God in my God. I saw people were excited with it. And the summary of the man of God was, you too can be a man of God. We are all men of God. Potential men of God. And the devil's greatest fight is to ensure that we remain children of God. Once we can grow beyond children, oh, he knows that he is run out of business. And we can run him out of time. But I see the end time move of God when children will be speedily maturing. Yes, yes. yes. When children will get tired of childishness. Yes, I see my children trying to live childishness. They want to grow. It's the, the natural desire of every child is growth. I see what happens in me to happen in the supernatural. Children of God in church will begin to cry to grow. You see them begin to hunger for prayer. You see them begin to hunger for fasting. You see them begin to hunger for the world. You see them begin to hunger for challenges. You see them begin to hunger for, 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 for uh, 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 opportunities to, to manifest the power of God in their lives. I see that move in the church of Jesus. The devil cannot stop it. That is the end time move of God. Children are getting out of childhood days. The devil cannot stop it. Because long as you remain a child, you are deprived of the privileges in Christ, even though we are heads of God. 
So Lord, as we met you that we are deprived of the privileges we have in Christ, even though we are ahead of God. And this makes us more different from sons. Galatians from the son said, now I see that the heir, as long as he's a child, different nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. That's one of the greatest pain that can happen to somebody. He is the Lord of all, but he is not different from his son. The, the second verse says, But he is kept under tutors and governors until the appointed time. Some of us understand why it looks like tutors and governors are still tutoring us and governing us. We, we, the reason why they are tutoring and governing us is because we have not gotten to our appointed time of living childishness. We need to grow up. You want to be preaching, but you have not grown up. And you are still kept on. When I look at what tutors and governors, they want the one that is paid governors is, is pastors, praise God forevermore. You want to be pastoring people, but you have not grown up. How can you pastor when you have not grown up? And this is the point of God that he was saying. He said, it's expected that when we get born again, we are children, but we begin to grow. He said that as we begin to grow, he said that we grow to a level where we cannot start pastoring people. Where we cannot start giving them. My mother will say, you were born to reproduce. Is it that not a book? She always tells me, you were born to reproduce. We are expected to, every child that remains a child for 40 years has a, in fact, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is a psychological and physical issue. Is that not so? Yes. So keep it, Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, lay hands on me. Lay leg on me. Lay teeth on me. Pastor, uh, my family. Pastor, my business. Pastor. Two years in Christ. You are the USC. I'm saying, Pastor, deliver me. Pastor, redeem me. Pastor, save me. Five years in Christ. You are saying, Pastor, my leg is ready. There is something wrong with you. There is something. You are an heir that has been made a child. Yes. And you are still being kept on that tutors and governors. Though you have everything, yet you cannot access anything. Though you have everything, yet you cannot live the life that God has given to you. <laughs> and this is the pain of the 21st century church. Heads that are still children. Babysitting heads. You keep babysitting. You babysit them. See, God did not come to babysit people. He called me to raise men, train them, and send them out. Train, train them, send them out. Baby sitting heads, baby sitting. How long will you how long will you baby sitting heads? Baby sit there, baby sit there, baby sit there. Somebody that's supposed to be casting out demons now is still looking for you to lay hands on me. What is the problem? Somebody that's supposed to be laying hands on the sick and the sick and are getting recovered is still looking for you to, to visit him in the hospital. Ah! What's the problem? There's something wrong somewhere. And that wrong thing will be destroyed in Jesus' name. Yeah. There's some people that by now, eh, by now, their pastor is meant to be sending them on crusades. I'm telling you, by now. The pastor said, eh, you, eh, you are going to this village of crusade, you are going to this village of eh, you go to 15 villages. Me, I have 20 villages to go to. You go to 15. By now, by now. You are not supposed to be following pastor with Bible to crusade again. Pastor, there's somebody here, you just got his of Ashma, pastor. By now, that's what they're working in. By now, at this time, at this time, by right, by right, too. By right, by now, that know they're working again. By now, by right, they're supposed to be. Pastor said, okay, uh, the new guys you read, they're the ones going to follow me to that room. He said, well, I'm going to teach them how to deal with devils. You, you've been dealing with devils for five years. You've been seeing how to deal with devils. You've been dealing with devils for five So, you, you are not going to go to these villages for your own crusade and then come back with testimony. When Jesus mentored the disciples for about two years plus, they are going he said, What is the problem? They are still carrying our Bible. They are still following us. And say, Pastor, there's somebody here who just bah! five years. He still says somebody here. By now, people are supposed to be saying somebody here for him. In fact, some of the people, some of the people that we have in church today, by now, eh, would have also have the chain of like 15 downlines under them. Mm. Eh, the <laughs> The principle of network marketing that they use in the secular business world is actually the principle of discipleship. Yeah. But the church is not allowed to do it. That's why it doesn't work always. When you go to 
the secular world is always not working. It will pin up at a point in time and it will crash. Why? Because it is not based on financial benefits. And if all the, 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 the pyramid goes down, it gets wider and the spread gets wider. It's the person on top that will be getting everything from under. So the thing crashes at the end of the day. But now, the principle of discipleship is that we are all pin up at Jesus. And we spread like that. The benefits will not be everybody getting his own benefits. Yeah. And at the end of the day, glory comes to Jesus. Jesus is not using me to make money from my head. He is using me for me to be blessed and for him to take the glory. Yeah. So we all spread at the down of the, down of the, pyramid, of the pyramids. We are all getting blessed. He is all taking the glory. Yeah. That's what it's meant to be. So by right, by now, some people are meant to be running crusades. Now, not following past of another crusade. They are supposed to be dealing with some territorial demons, some village demons, some city, street demons, some, you know, some say, they are supposed to be throwing their weights now. They are supposed to be flexing their muscles. By now, they are supposed to be looking for some native doctors to slap with anointing and, you know, where some care takers will answer giving them a little bit of prayer is too much. They are supposed to be getting on their food. Yeah. But see, we are not getting them. And we are not getting the benefits of we having Christ in us. See, there's this joy that comes when you look like you're dealing with the devil. Some people don't understand. Oh God, oh God. When the devil comes and tell you, when the devil shows, when you see that you are dealt with the devil, there's this joy. I, I'm excited every time. I see, you know what that makes me excited? Victories. I love victories. Every time I'm dealt with the devil, I'm excited. That is what we can shout about. And children don't deal with devils. Children don't fight, only cry. As I said, it's what we have in church today, crying babies. Ah, ah, crying, crying. But the pastor, healing, that's what cry there. And they cry for healing. And they cry for deliverance. And they cry for miracles. And they cry for husband. And they cry for wife. And they cry for children. And they cry for breakthrough. And they, just what you just stand, what you just see is crying babies. But my rights, many of those people are meant to be what? Mature. This is why we must step up to sons. And sonship only comes by the revelation of adoption. We must step up to sons. And this comes only by the revelation of adoption. The entire move of God is going to be massive. It's a move of sons. Not a move of See, there's going to be a phase in the way of the baby thing. Now, watch this. But those who will not be, who will not agree to step up to sons, they'll be faded away from the system. Mm. I don't know how long it's going to fade them away, but it's going to fade them away from the system. Now, it will not be a move of sons. Sons. That's the entire move, but it's a move of sons. Who so, who so throw the weight of God here on earth, who so throw the weight of God here on earth that the devil will run out of business. There are localities where for 20 years the devil will not be able to come close to those localities. So for 40 years, so 50 years, only one person, or because of only one person, 50 years, 50 years, that locality, the devil will be out of that business for 50 years. Another that environment for 50 years, they will close that and they will close down every day, every satanic office, every office of the devil. Don't have an office of the devil, you understand? We're drinking bars, I don't know. They are devil's offices. They will close down every of the devil's offices there. This is the manifestation of souls of the heart. People that are not living for self, people are not living to collect, to living to collect from God, crying unto God and crying to God again. Now they are crying for God to move in their generation. We are talking about men in the order of John Knox who said, Lord, give this God land do I die. Maybe we pray for revival till the revival begins to reverberate in the environment. When the atomic bomb of revival hits their locality and then it, it dissipates to the whole environment and you feel the environment really quaking for the power of God. Yes. We are getting there. Yes. It's coming close. I don't want your chapter. It's coming close, says the Spirit of God. And we face up those who don't want to grow. And we move with those who are ready to grow. And we face up those who don't want to grow. And we move with those who are ready to grow. And we take territories by these songs I am sending to the earth. And we take territories by these songs I am releasing to the earth. There will be a sharp arrows, piercing souls, piercing hearts. There will be as explosives. 
cities. Uh, the whole vicinity, the environment, the community will feel their impact. Uh, they will be as burning touches uh, that when they stand in one location and burn, uh, men will come and see them burn, says the Spirit of God. Uh, I'm releasing an end time army of songs. An end time army of songs. Uh, the Spirit of John Knox will be poured upon the earth again. Uh, the mantle of John Knox will be poured upon the earth again. Uh, the mantle of John Wesley will be poured upon the earth again. And preach for 72 hours, and souls be running and crying, repenting, and coming to Jesus. Men who will stand in an anointing that the fathers partook of, and in a dire dimension of those anointing, these are the souls I'm releasing to the essence of the Spirit of God. Let us pray the Holy Ghost for this. Don't move. 
blessed by this teaching. To listen to more teachings by Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna, please visit Grace Life Kami Podcast today. Send us an email via ministry at gmail.com. For more information about the ministry, kindly visit our website, ministry.org. Grace to you. Jesus is Lord.